Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm sharing with you a recipe that we have made before but with a twist. So this is going to be a tres leches cake with flan on the bottom. Um, and I will walk you through exactly how we did this. Um, in this video, I will not be going over the tres leches recipe because I do have a separate video for that. And I will link the recipe here in this video, in the description of the video, and also on the top right hand corner so that you can watch the exact steps of how to make the sponge cake. So today we will only be going over how we were able to mash both the flan and the tres leches cake together. And let's get started. To begin with this recipe, I did go ahead and bake a 9 by 13 inch pan of sponge cake and now I am dripping it with the three milks. Like I said, this recipe, I have already done it so I will link a video down below where it is very detailed. I do have to let you know that the part where you whip up the egg whites is very, very important because if you don't get your egg whites to be whipped up, your sponge cake will not be spongy. And basically what we need is the sponge cake to absorb all the milk that you see on the side of this cake. So I will let this cake rest in the refrigerator, preferably overnight or between three to four hours. So by the time you take it out, it is completely absorbed of the milk that you see on the side. To make the flan, I will be using um, this little mix from Goya. This is a 5.5 ounce uh, little box of pre-mixed flan custard, and I will be using three cups of milk instead of the four that the box calls for because I want it to be a little bit more sturdy. So here you do see my husband is helping me make this recipe uh, because he wanted to be a YouTuber for the day. And I will be using two cups of whole milk and one cup or one can of evaporated milk. We did go ahead and let the milk heat up just a tiny bit, but not completely boil. And as you can see, my husband is using a little whisk just to make sure that none of the contents of the little packet stick to the bottom. That is the last thing we want. And he will be constantly stirring this until the flan boils. After your custard has boiled, we are going to go ahead and spread this little caramel packet on the bottom of our pan. I am using a 9 by 13 inch disposable pan. You can definitely use a Pyrex or any other kind of dish that you would like to use. Um, in this case, we just did it this way because we gave it away to a friend. Once you have the little packet all into your pan, just go ahead and make sure to spread it using either a spatula or one of these little plastic spatulas like my husband is using because we want to make sure that all the edges of the custard, once they are set up, are able to absorb a little bit of this caramel at the bottom. Once you are satisfied with the spreading of the caramel, go ahead and pour in the hot um, substance of this custard and what we want to do is we want to make sure just to leave this out for a few minutes to be able to bring it down to room temperature because if you take it into the refrigerator at this point it will start to crust on the sides and it will be wobbly on the center so just go ahead and let it out for approximately 15 minutes and then take it to the refrigerator for between three to four hours or until it sets. To make our whipped topping, we have done this before in the video with the tres leches, but we will repeat it here. So basically what we are doing is we're taking two of these little 16 ounce um, heavy whipping cream containers. And what my husband is going to do is just simply pour them into our mixing bowl. And we will be using a half a cup of powdered sugar. You can definitely make your topping a lot sweeter. In this case, we just want it to be slightly sweet because we will be having that bottom layer of custard or flan and the caramel, so we don't want it to be overpowering. So go ahead and now at this point, put in the half a cup of powdered sugar. To 
To whip up our topping, we will be using the whisk attachment on our stand mixer. You can also do this using a hand mixer because I know a few of you will ask. You can definitely do it that way. Uh, when you are starting out, I do recommend that your bowl is cold. So we did go ahead and place our bowl into the freezer for approximately 15 minutes before doing this. And to ensure that your topping does not get over whipped, what we want to do is we want to start slowly like on the stir setting and then successes, successively you'll see us go slightly higher in a few minutes. Before doing that, we will be pouring in one tablespoon of vanilla extract. And now we, you will be seeing that we will be upping up the speed of the mixer. The reason why you want to do this slowly is because if you go from stir to really high, um, you do run the risk of over mixing or over whipping your cream. Um, in this specific case, we are going to try this stabilizer by, uh, it's called Whip It. I will link it down below. Quite honestly, we saw a difference immediately. So as soon as we poured it into our heavy whipping cream, we started to notice that it started to thicken a lot quicker. However, if you want it to be completely stabilized and if you wanted to decorate like let's say a wedding cake using this product, I would not recommend to only use this product but to use other ways to stabilize your whipping cream because it didn't hold up you know, for too long. We did have to whip it up again a few hours later. Remember that we want our whipping cream to be whippy, but we don't want it to start to curdle like butter. So if your whipping cream starts to look like little chunks of butter, then you've over whipped it. Um, there is ways to correct that, but at this point is when we are going to stop so that we prevent that or so that we don't go to that point. And you'll notice that at this point, um, it, the whipping cream is soft, but it also holds its shape and you can definitely spread it and it'll last for a few hours like this. In this case, what we did, since we still have to prepare our tres leches cake and our custard, we are going to store our whipping cream in the refrigerator by covering it. And we did go ahead and leave it in there for a few hours. Like I said, we did notice that even though we used the stabilizer, we had to re-whip it once again. Um, so I'm not quite sure how I feel about the stabilizer. I wouldn't recommend it per se, but I would probably try it again um, in a different recipe. So for this part of the video, it is the next day and our flan is already set. Um, so the custard slash flan is set and you can see that it is a little bit watery because we did go ahead and place that little bit of caramel. So it is absorbing into the flan. Um, my husband will not be here for this part of the video because he only helped me for the first part. Um, so now it's only me, but I'm going to go ahead and place little dollops of this whipping cream. Um, and I did mention earlier that we had to re-whip it. Um, that is because I thought we had waited a few hours, but we actually waited until the next day to put this together. So I did go ahead and re-whip it just to make sure that it had body and that it would be able to stick onto the cake. So for this part is where it gets a little bit messy when you cut it. And since this was an experiment, if you've done it a different way or a way that is easier or better, definitely let me know in the comments. Um, this was an experiment, it was delicious, but I did find that placing the flan or the custard on the bottom made it a lot harder to cut the cake. So I think that maybe if I try this again, I would place the cake on the bottom and the flan on the top, hoping that the flan doesn't slide off once you cut it. I hope that makes sense. And also the reason why um, I went ahead and added this layer of whipping cream or whipped topping is so in order for the sponge cake to stick to the flan, because I felt like if I just plopped it on there, it wouldn't stick as well, or I also felt that the caramel would ruin the texture of the Tres Leches cake. Like I said, this was a total experiment and you can definitely see me struggling here, trying to transfer this or thinking of how to transfer it. 
over to the top of the flan. At the end, what I did is I ended up just taking the entire um, piece of saran wrap with the cake. And what I did is I placed it on top and then I just slid off the saran wrap off of the bottom of the sponge cake. It worked pretty well. I'm pretty sure there's a better technique. Um, I did share this on my Instagram and you guys wanted to see this recipe. Um, these are a few reasons why I had decided not to share it is because it was a complete experiment and a lot of the parts that I thought would work didn't work um, as smoothly as I wanted them to, but in the end, the result was pretty delicious. So I think it's worth a, a try. Um, it's also probably worth a try to uh, put the sponge cake, like I said, on the bottom and the flan at the top. But anyway, now uh, what we're going to do is basically just cover the top of this cake. And I'm basically just going to put the rest of my whipped topping on top of this cake and we're going to just cover it evenly all the way to the edges using a little offset spatula. For this part and specifically for a tres leches cake, um, you don't have to be particularly perfect on how you spread it or how you ice your cake. You could definitely do this um, as how I'm doing it. You can also use piping tips to add borders. You can use all kinds of candies and toppings to decorate your cake. But today we're going a little bit more simple and I'm just simply going to spread the entire whipped topping as smoothly or as perfectly, quote unquote, as I can. And I did opt to um, go ahead and decorate the top of this cake using strawberries and sweetened condensed milk or lechera because I felt like it would go very well with the flan in the Tres Leches cake. Um, now that I'm saying it, I think it was a little bit too much or it was a little bit overpowering, but um, I feel that when you decorate a Tres Leches cake or a traditional Mexican Tres Leches cake, the strawberry or the peach is very crucial to the decoration part and that's why I included it in there. Um, so here, what I always like to do with my Tres Leches cakes is I always like to pre-slice them or pre-designate where the slice will go. This is definitely up to you. It's definitely up to your customer or your friend or whoever you're making this cake for how you want to present this cake. But I always just like to have the little markings of the lines where my toppings are going to go. Um, and that's only because I like for every single piece to have a little bit of the topping. And by topping, in this case, I mean a strawberry. So that's the reason why I made all these lines is because I wanted to make sure that every piece or every bite had a strawberry. And now what I'm simply going to do is I already went ahead and washed my strawberries. I cut them in half, but I decided that before placing them um, as a traditional Mexican Tres Leches cake, I will go ahead and just sprinkle the top with a tiny bit of ground cinnamon, and then I'll continue to place each of the strawberries into their designated squares. To finish off the decoration, I did go ahead and in a small piping bag, I added a little bit of sweetened condensed milk and cut a very tiny hole. And now I'm simply going to drizzle each of these strawberries or each of the squares with this sweetened condensed milk to finalize my decoration. And here is the finished product. Like I said, I feel like this cake, um, although it had a, I had a little bit of trouble getting out the first slice, as you see here, um, I feel like it's worth a try. I feel like it's worth, um, you know, maybe troubleshooting it and putting the flan on the top and, you know, doing all kinds of different experiments. I wanted to share with you guys the experiment that I did with this specific cake. It was delicious. And as you can see, my second slice was more successful. I always feel like the first slice of anything is a little bit harder, but here I just wanted you to see how it looks. So it has a very thin layer of flan on the bottom. It has whipped topping 
the tres leches cake and then more whipped topping with the strawberry and sweetened condensed milk it's a complete mouthful to say all that but it's definitely worth a try um, like I said, this was a total experiment. Let me know what you guys think about this recipe. Let me know if you try it. Thank you so, so much for requesting it. Sometimes uh, when I do these experiments, I don't want to post it because I do end up messing up. But uh, you guys requested that I added this in. So basically the only difference is that we made an express custard. And that is very easy to make. The instructions are on the back. I will also have um, instructions on how I did it in the description box and on my website soon. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to share your video with a friend. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe before you go. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye.